Hello everybody, welcome to day one of our live celebration event, Replenish, honoring this the publication of this new book as well as the spring season. So I'm going to go ahead and let people come on in while I get the audio recording started in case my live fails, which has occasionally happened. So I like to do an audio backup and so I'm gonna go ahead and get that started real quick and then make sure that I can see the chat on my computer. So bear with me for a second while we begin. I see that Teal and Karen are here, good to see you. And uh, Carrie is here as well, and I see some other people coming on in. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really happy to be here with you all, celebrating this energy of the spring and taking a little time out, a little sacred pause, a little spot of time together for some replenishment, for some nourishment, for some reflection and for some inspiration. So just a second here where I check in on my computer. I see Alyssa is here too, good to see you. I'm not seeing any, the, uh, I, it varies for me. Those of you who are in the Goddess Magic community on Patreon, we do a community practice live every Monday and um, it's very random whether or not I can see chat using my phone or not. So kind of a strange thing. So I'm gonna check real quick. Okay, so it looks like I'm not seeing chat on my phone. So I've got it open on my computer at the same time and I can see that too. So hello, Christy and Leanne. Now I have to look to the side though, which makes it a little awkward, but whatever. We do what we can, right? That's part of part of daily practice. That's part of everyday magic. That is part of the imperfect reality of being a human, living a human scaled life on this earth is that things don't always work out exactly perfectly. So I can see the chat over here. Hello, Bridget, glad to see you. Christy, Leanne, happy that you are here. And uh, Alyssa is saying hi, and I will go back and make sure I didn't miss anybody else's, anybody else's comments. Colleen is here as well, glad you got your book today. It looks like a lot of people have gotten their books today. That's one of the reasons I pushed the dates for this retreat back is because they there was a delay with the printer and I thought if I if I had to push it back then hopefully a lot of people will get them in time. You will be totally fine if you don't have the book. This is kind of a broad experience that I'm planning to offer and so you don't have to have the book in your hands to still get a lot out of it. And then my plan is to publish the replays on YouTube or on a separate website so people can come back and enjoy it. So if you find that you're missing the book and you wanna get it, then you can come back and enjoy later, but you'll be fine without it today. Hello, Ruth, glad you're here for a few minutes and Heather, I'm glad you're here as well. So welcoming you to come in now that we've gathered and my various tech bits are patched together, welcoming you to come in to yourself, to take a nice deep breath and settle into your body, allowing yourself to pause for this moment, in this time, in this place, with these people, in this online container, this little web of magic that we weave together that connects us to different places in the world, to different states, to different countries, to even different continents. Here we are, are all together weaving this web of magic. Okay, so a pause to call your spirit back, to center yourself in your body to welcome yourself back home. And as I said, we have a dual purpose in gathering live today. And one purpose is to celebrate the publication of Replenish. This is the fourth in my series of goddess devotionals, back to the tidy little pocket-sized version that can travel along with you. And also to celebrate the spring and to invite that energy of spring into our lives, invite in some replenishment, some restoration, and some renewal. And so I'd like to start today with this pause. Hello, Hecate, glad you're here too, and Carrie, glad to see you. So taking a pause, and then I'm gonna go ahead and read, I decided to read a little tiny bit from the book, and I picked day 28 
The way this book is organized is as a 90 day devotional so that it can keep you company for 90 days as a little portable daily practice, a little pocket sized daily practice. And so I thought, why not open up to day 28 and offer that prayer? So you may wish to sit with your hand on your heart. You can also light a candle if you have one with you, if you'd like to invite in a little bit, a little bit more of a spot of sacredness there, you can light a candle or you can just sit with your hand on your heart and go ahead and receive the prayer. The collection, the, the poems in this collection, some of them are written as blessings to be received. Some of them are written as prayers to offer. And then we'll talk a little bit later about how you can adapt them to best suit your mood and purpose of the day. So, hmm. let us not sink into apathy or despair, cynicism or pessimism. Let us be curious about our own lives and those of others. Let us tap into purpose and refuse to give up on hope. Let us live with hearts and eyes and hands wide open. Let us step into the sacred right where we are and celebrate what we find to share. So I really find that we can step into the sacred every day, that we can step into the sacred right where we are, and that we will always find something there to share, whether it's the goldfinch on the bird feeder that I see outside my door right now, whether it's the blue, the clear blue sky or the rain clouds, whether it's the flowers that are in bloom, whether it's the trees that are just budding out, there's always a little scrap of the sacred that we can find wherever we are. And then I really encourage us to share that with each other. I see, see teal is saying that it's sunny but windy in northern Illinois. We're having a beautiful day here in Missouri. It's really lovely. We've been doing the thing as I referenced several times before. We're swinging kind of wildly between tastes of winter and shades of fall and so we have had frost and it's frozen the last couple of days but today is just beautifully sunny and wonderful so I find that very replenishing as well. And so I had a little poem where are my little poems go? I have so many little poems. <laughs> um, that's why I write books, because they have to go somewhere. Okay, <laughs> so here's a, this is another practice slash poem in one that is on one of the little cards that I make for our Goddess Magic patrons. And so it connected really well to this theme of replenishment. And I would, I would like to speak really quickly about replenishment. That's one of the words that I chose. It was a secondary word of the year for me. I had liberate is my word of the year, kind of liberate, cracking out of the self-constructed boxes and liberating yourself from should do, ought to, have to, must do, and kind of stepping into want to and following the joy and the inspiration. And then I realized I didn't just need liberate. I needed replenishment as well. I needed to replenish. I needed to restore, to refill, to refuel, etc. And one of the reasons I created 30 Days of Goddess, and I'm so passionate about daily practice is because it that helps us to restore refuel and renew every single day not something that we just have to save for later or wait till the perfect time but we're worthy and we're capable of small moments of replenishment renewal and sacredness in every single day but the reason I chose replenish for the word of the year is like we need to refill if we have this this tank of energy, so to speak, it needs to be replenished, it needs to be refilled. And we need, that requires time, that requires uh, patience, that requires slow time, that requires nourishment, that requires joy, that requires all kinds of things. So I don't just want a tiny taste of magic in each day, I want a full tank, I want a full, I want to be fully replenished. And so I chose that as a companion word of the year. And, uh, and then, this book was actually going to be called something different. Um, it was just gonna be called Center, and I suddenly changed it to Replenish, because I thought that's what I hope to offer with this, is these little moments of replenishment for your day. So going ahead and sharing this little card with you now, again with the breath. Hi Karen, glad to see you as well. Hi Claudia, glad you received your book as well. That's good, and I see Anita has come in too. So glad to see you all here today. So again, with the nice pause, I'd love to invite you, 
Look, we can come home over and over again. We can step back into ourselves over and over again. We can re-enter presence over and over and over again. And when we feel scattered, when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel like there's too much to do, that those sensations, that's our doorway into something different. That's our invitation to come back home. So I remind myself of that a lot. It's okay to come home over and over and over again. It's okay to return over and over and over again. It's uh, as Patricia Lynn Riley says, there will always be distractions. The life practice is to return. So keep coming back home. If you feel frazzled, if you feel scattered, if you feel distracted, take that deep breath, put your hand on your heart, keep coming back home. Okay, so here we go. The time of replenishment you seek is at hand. Open yourself to it. You are worthy of a pause. Rest your hands against your heart and listen to your own wisdom. Set your feet upon this earth and feel your own belonging. Open your arms to the sky and welcome your own restoration. Hold your hands in prayer pose in front of your heart. Kiss your fingertips and feel gratitude. Open your hands and look into them. Celebrate and savor your own good work. It is good. It is enough. Now is the time to steep new dreams low and slow. Time to be patient with your own pace and tender with your own timing. It is time to soften, to trust, to be content. So spring holds these twin energies of growth and renew renewal and energy and inspiration and also sinking your roots deep into the nourishing darkness, planting yourself st with steadiness and sturdiness and with the capacity to draw up what you need in order to grow into your own fullness and wholeness. So we have space for both. We have, we need to be able to extend up, to reach into the sun, to spread out, to bloom and to shine. And we need to sink deep into the dark soil to ground ourselves, to anchor ourselves, to be replenished, refueled, restored, and renewed. So the energy of spring really powerfully holds the invitation into both of those things, reaching up into newness, sinking down into deepness and restoration. Both things are needed. Hello, Sherry, glad to see you as well. And Dawn, I'm so glad you are here too. Okay, so I do have to keep glancing over to see the, the chat, but at least, you know, at least I've got both things, video and chat. That is a good thing to have. So, okay, let's see. <sighs> I wanted to share some thoughts about the, again, with the intention of this book. And I was really inspired by two quotes. The first one comes from Sue Monk Kidd in her essay collection, First Light. And so the subtitle of Replenish is it's spots of time for reconnecting with the sacred and yourself. And what I really hope to offer with this book is that spots of time, a spot of time for reconnecting, as well as what the second quote is about, which is soul seconds, taking a little soul second, something that I have noticed for years, and I've noticed it myself, but in other people as well, is that people sometimes save their moments of magic. They save their tending to the soul and nourishing their sense of the sacred. They save it for later. They save it for perfect. They save it for the right time. They save it for the special occasion. They save it for the right wheel of the year holiday. And what happens is they have a, an ongoing longing, an ongoing sense of disconnection or even almost um, sometimes with uh, when I work it with um, with ritual with people, I see they're just starving for that type of depth, that type of connection, that type of... of um, that type, that type of magic, they're starving for it. And so what I find is, is, is when we allow ourselves daily sacred pauses, when we allow ourselves daily soul seconds, when we allow ourselves daily spots of time, <clears throat> then 
we always have bits of magic. Our whole lives can be permeated through, woven around and through with magic. We don't have to save it for special. We don't have to save it for the right time. We don't have to save it to do it right. We can have that we can have the soul second now. So that's what it was based on. Hello, Teresa, glad you're here as well. And uh, so anyway, here's the quote from Suman Kid, always a, always a classic. It was excruciatingly easy to lose touch with the inner life of the soul. There is such a profusion of demand and complexity, so many to-do lists, the unceasing compulsion to accomplish something. When I read that the Chinese pictograph for busyness is heart killing, I felt the truth of that in my bones. In the midst of the struggle to care for my soul, I read Wordsworth's poem, The Prelude, in which he writes about spots of time that nourish and repair the soul. I believe he was referring to brief concentrated moments, little epiphanies that inflame us with a sense of the holy. I love that phrasing, inflame us with a sense of the holy. So I feel like we can be inflamed by a sense of the holy simply by stepping outside and tipping our face to the sky or bending down and resting our hands on the earth, looking out and seeing a bird, of catching sight of the crabapple blooms. Those things can inflame us with a sense of the holy. Also, just sitting with your hands on your heart, pausing, looking out, extending your awareness out into the world, that can inflame you with a sense of the holy. It's a spot of time. Okay, so back to Suman Kid. Little epiphanies that inflame us with a sense of the holy. I began to search for spots of time here and there in my day. I found them by stopping, just stopping. I began to come away to a nook somewhere in the house or the yard where I would spend five minutes or less sitting still and receding into the quiet core of myself caring for my soul turned out to be simply that spots of time in which to be spots of time in which to be so we all need spots of time in which to be and the little collection i chose the all these short little short little readings for this book to give you a chance for one of those spots of time just to be and to hopefully inflame you with a sense of the holy <laughs> Okay, and so then the second quote is from Sue Patton Teeley from the Woman's Book of Soul, and this is about soul seconds. Taking little soul seconds, one small prayer, and I'm, I'm super into like a micro practice, the hand on your forehead, the hand on your heart, the hand on your belly, the folding your hands in prayer pose, kissing your fingertips, laying your hands against your heart, those small little moments, those small little micro practices. One small prayer, a few minute meditation, a short burst of gratitude helps immeasurably to revive our thirsty spirits. That's what I was talking about with the starving, the starving for the sacred. <sighs> helps us to revive our thirsty spirits. We don't have to join a convent or live in a cave to attend to our souls. Although I admit it sounds appealing sometimes. Luckily, our souls flower and grow when nurtured with consistent rays of attention interspersed among the busy hours of our day. Our souls flower and grow with consistent rays of attention. So it doesn't have to be all day long. It doesn't have to be a month long retreat. It doesn't have to be a, um, sitting in a cave alone <laughs> in order to bestow upon yourself that ray of attention that allows your soul to flower. It can be a spot of time. It can be a soul second. So this is a book of soul seconds and spots of time in which to be. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today about that. And um, yeah, okay. So thinking about spring and the energy of spring, I had saved a quote to share with you that comes from Donna Ashworth in the book, Wild Hope, about what spring, the energy of spring and what that means. Have another little drink of water. Okay. I have always believed spring to be the harbinger of hope, the launch pad to lighter days, the gateway to life. Spring soothes our winter worn souls with anticipation and its promise of more. It gently shakes our hibernating toes and whispers, wake now, your wintering days are done. 
And so, with each eager sunrise, we emerge, we reignite, we re-energize. And as with nature around us, we begin to rise and renew. Come on in, spring. We have much longed for your light, for your joy, for your new. We are slowly rousing from slumber. Welcome back. Hello, Francis. Glad you're here too. You made it <laughs> for a little spot of time. Okay. And then speaking of more, so that book, that quote said that about, um, yeah, we've longed for your new and spring brings that promise of more. And so then I had another quote that I, hello, Penny, glad you're here as well. I had a, another quote that I'd saved that I shared with our uh, Goddess Magic community. Like I said, I do a community practice live every Monday in that community, which I find is really a helpful way to get the week started and to kind of center ourselves in a type of connection and belonging and shared experiencing that you can, it, it, that there's just something about the connecting live that enhances that sensation of a shared practice instead of just everybody in their own little places doing their own little things. And so I shared this quote with the patrons in that community then, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you all here today as well. Hello, Deb. Glad you are here too. You made it also. Okay, so this one comes from Jamie Favarin, and this is about more as well. And this goes like this. Yes, you were made for more, but maybe it's not about more tasks, more work, more responsibility, more consumption. Ever think that instead you were made for more laughter, more spontaneous fun, more sunshine on your face, more ice cream, more feeling at home in your body? More swims in the ocean, free limbs exposed to open air. More love, more long lingering dinners with conversations that take on inspiring, thought-provoking tangents. More deep talks, more depth in general. More days lost in a book or a life. More smiling, more joy. More warm evenings punctuated with contentment. More sighs of relief, more pasta, more bread, more food that you love without any guilt, more hugs, <laughs> more of the feeling you get when you're hooked on a new book and ravenous to finish it, more of life, more of being you being exactly you, more enjoying, so much more enjoying right? So that's what I'd love to invite us to consider this spring, this season, is how can we invite in more of the enjoying, more of what we love, more, which, more of what inflames us with the sense of the holy, more spots of time, more sacred pauses, more of what matters. And so anyway, I'd love to have, I, I, invite you to carry that with you into this season, the idea of more of the enjoying, more of the enjoying. Yes, Dawn, more pasta. That is what we are talking about, right? And uh, yes, exactly. More of the enjoying. And so that was a, I just love that little evocation. And so that brings me back to the <laughs> replenished book is that I really feel like that is what a consistent, dedicated daily practice invites in for us is and I don't so I say, I say sometimes that I'm, I don't make extravagant promises. Like I, there's few things that I will promise, but I will promise that a daily practice can actually change your life, that there's a world renewing, life changing, life sustaining magic in daily practice. And, and also, yes, M Marta is laughing about the bread and pasta. And yes, so maybe there's a life sustaining world renewing magic in allowing yourself more ice cream, bread and pasta as well. <laughs> like there's magic there as well. And so I'm not, so like I say, I don't make extravagant promises or make extravagant claims, but I do think we can actually transform our lives through devotion, through devotion to noticing, through devotion to noticing, to noticing what's here, to stepping wholeheartedly into our lives in full, being available and open and welcoming, whether there's storm clouds, whether there's sun, whether there's roses, whether there's um, 
roadkill, roadkill and roses, thunder and sun, whatever it is that we see, we can be in devotion to noticing. We can be in devotion to our own lives. We can be in devotion to our own lives. I think of that as our, that's really like the, that's really the task is being in devotion to our own lives and being in devotion to our own lives does not mean that they are perfect and that nothing ever goes wrong. It means we're here for everything. It means we're here for the whole thing. We're here for everything. And, uh, yes, trust. That, that's a good point, Teal. Trust that you will know what makes you happy and make room for that. And trust, I talk about that following your joy, following your inspiration, but also trusting your joy, those things that bring you that sense of delight and that sense of connection, like trust those moments and follow them, follow where they lead. And you'll find there is life-changing magic there. There's life-changing changing magic there. So one of the things they wrote in the book is we can transform our lives through devotional practice. And this is not a extravagant claim. This is a truth. This is a lived, a lived truth. We can transform our lives for devotional practice. We feel our whole selves become more present, more intentional, more aligned, more calm, more content as we prioritize dialoguing with divinity and sinking into the sacred. That is that that's this whole process of deepening and unfolding of listening and responding. It is a pathway of self trust and connection, a threshold into enchantment and an invitation into magic and a doorway into belonging. I am awed by this power touched by this miracle and transformed by the simple and sacred practice of noticing. That's what it is, a simple and sacred practice of noticing. <sighs> okay. <sighs> so after that, musing on the life-changing magic of devotion, knowing that the devotion can be to being present for your own life as it unfolds. It doesn't have to be, I say, it doesn't have to be any special or more magical than it already is because it's really pretty special and magical. It doesn't have to be any less special or magical than it already is. It's you right here, just exactly as you are, noticing everything that your life holds and being open to stepping into it, stepping into those moments of the sacred, those spots of time as they unfold. So I wanted to go ahead and read a poem to you too from the uh, In the Temple of the Ordinary Volume 2. And this one is called Antidote. And it is in here right before the spring section of this book. So I felt like it was really appropriate for the first day of this spring retreat. So again, with a nice deep breath. Oh, maybe a drink of water if you have one. Or tea, if anybody has any tea. Yum, I love tea. <laughs> okay. So here's the antidote. We were supposed to be taking a walk, but instead we lay on our backs in the pine needles, eyes closed, basking in sunshine with the smell of pine in our lungs. The ground was firm and warm below us, the support that is always right beneath our feet, even when we forget to notice it. The sound of a red-bellied woodpecker at work, a frog in the softly singing waters, bubbling through the ravine after a long rain, the soft touch of moss and the rough rasp of pine cones beneath our fingers. I let myself soak in the sun and pine, and when at last I rose to my feet, something within me had been restored, replenished, renewed. I read an article that said the antidote to depletion is not rest, but restoration. And so I found, found my way to the pines and stones and let them hold me whole. So... Today, this weekend, this season, I would love to invite you to consider what you need for restoration. What is your antidote? Is it just pines and stones? Is it a walk? Is it the violets? Is it smelling the roses? What is it that is your antidote? What is, the, what is it that you need for replenishment and for restoration? And then possibly allow yourself to have more of that. It doesn't have to be all day, every day. It doesn't have to be the whole thing, but how might you allow yourself a little bit more of what it is that you crave? And for me, it is. It's those pines and stones just laying, 
laying on the ground <laughs> on the pine needles. It feels like an actual refilling of the tank, recharging of the battery. So what that is for you, for you, it might be your, your yoga mat. I've talked a lot about power spots lately. For you, that might be your yoga mat. For you, that might be your bed. For you, that might be your meditation cushion. It might be your porch swing. There's doorways to the sacred everywhere, and there are portals of possibility and portals to the infinite everywhere. Even your own two hands against your heart can be a doorway to the sacred. In fact, it's the it's the best doorway to the sacred right here. Oh, Francis, I'm sorry that you forgot to pick up your daughter at work. We'll still be here for replay, so you can come back for that. Um, okay, so we've actually, I was just planning for these to be about a half an hour long each time. And so we've already come to the end of our first half an hour already. And the... Um, yeah, so thank you everybody for joining me today. I do have one more little thing to share before we close out. And then I will be back tomorrow at the same time, at tomorrow and the next day. And then these will be available as replays for you as well. And I hope, like I said, I'm hoping to put them together on a website or something like that so you have them together. But anyway, I'm surprised by how fast a half an hour goes. So we will have another check-in like this tomorrow, continuing the same thoughts. But to close, I decided to go ahead. I told you I had put together these little packets from the Story Goddess Oracle where they're a little ritual in one like I share in the group sometimes. So I went ahead and spontaneously chose one. I Oh, oh that's what I was going to tell you is I, I decided to pick um, one for every day and I picked them. I picked them spontaneously first and I thought oh I want to pick the spring goddesses so then I went back and I picked out the spring goddesses and then I thought no I should pick the goddesses that wanted to be present and so we got uh, um I always have trouble saying her name Ariane Rod and so we got her and I was going to leave you as the closing little ritual from her and thank you Penny for being here I'm glad you were here and Colleen glad you were here as well Ruth Dawn and Anita I see your comments going by I'm glad you're here thank you Karen so we're closing with Ari Ar Ariane, wait, Ariane Rod, <laughs> Ariane Rod. <laughs> um, and so the word on the back for her is nurture, which I think is perfect for replenishment. This was a, just a, a surprise connection here. So nurture, what do you need? So let's say spontaneously, may you nurture your, may you nurture spots of time for replenishment in your day. May you nurture more of what brings you joy. And then her affirmation, my life is full of inspiration and a little prayer or a little practice, a little reminder, lay an offering of time at your own feet. Collect some kindling of shoulds and constraints and construct a pyre on which to burn your shame. Watch it ignite and drift away into smoke. So we could say, let it, let that, if you're withholding things from yourself that you love, that are re restorative to you, that are replenishing to you, that are renewing to you, if you're withholding those things from yourself, cast those onto the pyre and let them drift away into smoke because you deserve some of your own time. So, and then my life is full of information, inspiration. Ariane Rod, yes, <laughs> Ariane Rod. So listen, I am the silver wheel of life, radiant in my knowing, I court mystery, I dip into deepness, I swim in the infinite. From me, new worlds are spun into being. I know the songs the stars sing in the night. So may you have a wonderful rest of your day. So glad that you enjoyed this little spot of time with me and with each other today. And I will see you again tomorrow at the same time right here in the Creative Spirit Circle Facebook group. So thank you, Sherry. And thank you, Lacey and Marta and Christy. It is a nice refresh, isn't it? It has been good to see you. And Karen, I are, and Karen, I see going by Michelle. Glad you were here as well. It has been been so special to share some space with you all today in celebration of both replenish 
and of the spring. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, Claudia. I'm so glad to see some familiar faces today and some new people as well. It has been wonderful to share space with you. So go forth, keep living your magic, keep uh, celebrating the spring and keep allowing yourself spots of time in which to be, in which to inflame yourself with a sense of the holy. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Karen. Sutton, glad you were here as well. Okay, bye-bye everybody. See you tomorrow.